Now let's begin with our reading from Mark's Gospel. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words and in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them, the Son of God will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Here ends the reading. A little over a week ago, Lent began. I suggest that silent meditative time with your imagination is the right elixir for your 40 days and 40 nights. This week, I ask you to imagine being in the company of Jesus, a man who heals, exercises demons, and even brings the dead back to life. Imagine watching this man doing miracles day after day, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and voices to the mute. Disciples knew that this teacher taught with authority as his miracles assured them that he was indeed the Son of God. He was the greatest they could ever imagine, and they were witnesses. It couldn't end, for he was God. But he was now telling them that he would suffer, be rejected, be killed and then rise again. How could the holiest, most healing, most loving man, and most importantly, the Son of God, ever be killed? Imagine how you would feel in this moment. Take a few deep breaths. Picture this moment with Jesus. If any of us were live witnesses of this Jesus, we would have surely felt that he would never be killed. He was a king and a God and was worthy of a throne and certainly not ever be subjected to suffering and death. And when Peter tried as we would have to defy this prophecy from Jesus. Jesus calls Peter and us Satan because he and we are focused on what is earthly and temporary rather than what is divine and permanent. In the famous greatest showman tune, Never Enough, we hear that without you, 
or in my mind, without Jesus. Nothing is enough without him. I'm sure that Peter could not bear the thought of letting Jesus die. When you listen to Never Enough, imagine for a moment that Peter and you are singing it to Jesus, saying that towers of gold and all of the stars are not enough without you, Jesus. I suggest that for all of Lent, Jesus is preparing us for the darkest of days because without those days, without Jesus' death, there are no bright lights and there is no resurrected Jesus. Only if we stop seeing what we want to see in our own lives and instead imagine Jesus on the cross and then see in our mind's eye the resurrected Christ, only then will we end Lent and reach our Easter. Jesus is all that we need. Imagine for a moment that he is next to you and that he is all that you have. Take a few deep breaths. I ask you to end by clicking the Greatest Showman song from now on, a tune of triumphant understanding that no matter who we are and whatever challenges we face, we have all that we need when deep in our soul we have Jesus. For Jesus takes away our sins, pulls us out of our darkest death-like moments, and takes us into a heaven filled with love. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we end with our collecting prayer. Lord Jesus, be gracious to all of us who have doubted you and bring us again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Help our imaginations in this time of Lent to bring us closer to you and fully understanding of your infinite love.